All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Imanshu, and we are continuing our journey of Lightning Web Components Masterclass. So, in the previous tutorial, we talked about the entire LWC bundle. If you remember, we did this bundle showcase, and we talked about certain files that you have here. Right? This is the actor. This is the manager. This is the director, and this is the makeup stylist. You know all of that stuff. So. That is clear. Now, what I want you to understand is what really happens in the runtime, right? So, if I were to go back to, let's go back here and let's go to our new application that we created. We created LWC Masterclass, right? So, if I open this application, if I look at the Home tab, you see this message that's showing up. It's coming from an LWC component, right? But how does the Salesforce system really understand this, right? So, let's understand that bit. So if I were to tell you that you have to go to the grocery store to buy me mangoes, you have to, you know, exit your house, take a specific left or a right, go straight and then go to this particular uh, market and then buy something. You cannot buy just something. You have to buy mangoes. You have to come back to the same path and then you have to reach and then give hand over the mangoes to me. Right. So that's a process. Right. And you know how to do it because you understand that these are the steps that are involved. Similarly, it is important to understand that when a LWC component is rendering on the Salesforce environment, what really happens behind the scenes, right? So the very first thing that Salesforce does is it reads the XML first, right? So the first thing that would happen is this file right here. It will see whether the component is exposed or not. If it is exposed only then it will basically consider, okay, I can show this particular uh, component to people meaning if mangoes are not available in the market it is not the season you cannot buy them right similarly an lwc component if, if it is not uh, you know exposed you cannot use it or you cannot leverage it on the screen so that's the first thing that the salesforce platform does it will read the xml if it sees that oh okay the component is exposed okay fine i am going to render the html pair uh, html component right so then what it will do it will take a look at the html file what is the content that the person is wanting to see okay this is the content i'll render it Okay, so it will start rendering this information. When I say rendering, basically nothing, just displaying the content on the screen. Okay, it will go ahead and display the content on the screen. But here, what it will notice it that notices it is powered by JavaScript. How? If you take a look at this name, when it is trying to render it, it is basically seeing ah okay, there's a name variable that is bound by the JavaScript file. So is the name variable defined in the JavaScript? Oh yes, it is Vishalini. So it will just pick it up from here, give it to the HTML and replace the variable here with Vishalini and then render the entire thing. Okay. Once it renders the HTML, it will see, ah, okay. Is there any styling added or not? So on top of what is given in the HTML, it will look for any styling and it will apply it. Right. So the background color of white that is coming in this line is, is applied because of the CSS. So that is happening next. Right. And then finally, if there are any, any, you know, vector graphics available, it is going to use the icons wherever possible. That is the last thing it will do. Okay. We have not looked into SVGs specifically, but yeah, that's another thing that you can do. We'll take a look at it. Okay. In a very short span of time. So that is basically what happens in the runtime in a very simple and a short and sweet way. Now, if you take a look at the LWC component right here now before jumping into multiple things, let me show you a bit of stuff. So you see this LWC folder, you have all the LWC components here. If you take a look at the components, you have this CSS, HTML, JS files, which open on the right panel. This is for people who are new to Visual Studio Code. You can also click on this bundle here and you can open things from here. So you can see you can do this also. Okay, you don't have to go here and then you know all the time you cannot don't have to open it and find it. Just keep it closed. You can click on this file, you can switch the file like this. As simple as that. Okay, that's why this directory, this uh, breadcrumb is given so that you can leverage it, it a bit easily. Okay, you can redirect yourself a bit easily. So I need to work on the HTML file. Okay, done. Now let's move on to JS file. Okay, done. Now let's move on to the CSS file. Okay, done. Save, 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 deploy. Okay, this is a shortcut available here, which is a breadcrumb. Now, coming back, so there are more files that you can add to your LWC component, right? So if you were to go to, you know, buy mangoes, again, mangoes, because it is the season of mangoes, uh, I'm using this example, you can take a scooter or you could take a car or you could go walking, right? But based on the kind of distance you want to traverse, you will use some utilities right similarly based on the power that you want in your html code right on or on your lightning web component you can use javascript files 
okay and how does that work you basically have to simply go to the file explorer right click on the file name let me expand it a bit right click on the file name click on new file and you can just create a new file here okay just make sure that the case and everything the name is exactly same as the lwc bundle and you can just give js as the extension okay however you already have a same file created so what you can do is you can just call it utils.js okay so this is something that you can create all right now anything that is core to the bundle or to the lwc component should have the same name okay but you can only have one file with this particular extension here so .js did not allow me to create a bundle showcase but it did allow me to create a utils.js and what i can do here i can create my functions handle grocery shopping i can cre create my functions here and then i can leverage them in my parent javascript file we'll see how how to do that okay but the idea here is to explain you that yeah you can actually create or add additional files wherein you have a js file so imanshu can i have three more js files yes you can have three more js files just ensure that the names are not duplicated you cannot do this you cannot do this but you can do this all right or you can do this so all of this is possible all right the next thing is you can have css files and we already looked at it we are we actually created a css file you can have a css file and you can have more css file that you want to refer see there's always going to be one prime file for every js html and css and then you can create more of it but they are more like your your helper helper files that you can leverage and use okay so you can create css file just the way i showed you if you did not have this css file here that we created in the last tutorial if i say move to trash what you do is you basically say new file and you use the same name right because you don't have a file yet so the first file that you create would basically be the same name and the benefit of having the same name is that whenever the html is rendering right the class that you have used it will always take a look at the css file that's with the same name that's the logic basically okay so if if you are going to a wedding of a elder brother everyone goes to the younger brother right where is my room what wh where am i supposed to stay what, where is the food what timing is this and that so you can uh, understand with the same analogy all right but now if you want to create another css file that would be a second css file but it will not be the same name make sense all right svg and jest now jest files are basically nothing but test classes for lightning web components i'm not going to go deep into this for now if time permits and we have space in our curriculum towards the end i'll cover jest framework all right but again because code coverage is primarily essential on the apex side and i am not saying it is not essential on the client side but because salesforce does not really tell you to you know mandatorily cover lwc components via jest it is fine until then so you can skip this for now okay that's not your headache for now all right but we'll do a short tutorial on how to use test classes in lwc so that you can test your javascript code because essentially you are writing code here right the code that you are writing should be covered that's the idea and that's why the jest framework okay it's a native native framework from you know angular and react so pretty much all the javascript uses jest and whenever you create a lightning web component this test folder automatically gets created it does not have to be created by you but it is one additional file that is created and it is called test.js and it will test which file the js file of this particular lwc bundle which is this file right here all right great coming to svg files svg files are nothing but let me just save it first of all let's close all of these and let's say deploy okay now svg files are another are another set of files that you can add to your lwc so if i were to say new file again the rule of thumb is to always have the same name but now you can say svg all right so what is dot svg svg stands for uh, scalable vector graphics now these are nothing but icons when i say icons these are nothing but all these small icons that you see right facebook twitter uh, app icons so svg files are those that help you identify or distinguish in a visual manner okay what is basically 
uh, this component right so if I were to go to let's say Salesforce and if I were to show you this page you see these icons these are vector graphics you see this icon this could also be a vector graphic or a logo right but essentially the understanding or the idea is uh, you have you know PNGs JPEG uh, all of that types right uh, in images SVG can also be considered as an image but with a with a very good uh, pixel resolution so if I were to look for let's look for a free SVG icons for use okay I'm randomly going to pick something up let's see if it uh, helps us so this is SVG repo okay fine this is fine let's take maybe this one right here this tree I saw a tree somewhere yeah this one so this is an SVG and this is how it looks all right but this is nothing but a vector graphic all right the good thing about vector graphic is it you know they are always pixelated they'll not lose their uh, you know pixels even you zoom in or zoom out that's the good thing and they are used for these kind of things to be you know for for minified icons and compact icons that take less space but give you the best benefits okay now this is the icon that I have all right now I want to actually use it as the icon of my lightning web component now when I say that what do I really mean if I go to this setup and I say edit page here you remember we dropped the lightning component on the page so this is one component and this is one component right now what is the name of this component the name of this component is bundle showcase so if I search for bundle showcase this is the component that I have dropped but if you notice there is this icon here which is lightning icon right I can choose to create an icon here and I can create my own icon and I can leverage it from by using SVG which is the custom feeling like you know that's why we use emojis in our chat right if I'm laughing out loud I'll put a laugh, laughing emoji right that kind of a thing and if you notice all the standard things actually come with SVGs so all of these are very helpful to understand or visualize oh, okay what is this about so if this is a dashboard this could be a list view this is a leads so all of that stuff this is a report chart so all of that stuff right similarly why not have icons for our components right and that's where SVGs come into picture so what am I going to do I'm going to download this vector right here and I'm going to look at this file this is the file right here okay and if you want to basically how would you use it I just showed you that you have to create a SVG file here now what is the content of this file do you upload an image no you simply look at this page source and it gives you a code snippet see SVG code snippet you just pick this up copy it entirely paste it in your SVG file and you say save done I'm going to go ahead and say deploy let's deploy this again and let's wait for it to deploy this has been deployed and now if you notice here these files have been deployed and it contains the utils.js and the SVG, JS, SVG file also all right now let's go back to our org let's close this up let's go back here let's refresh and I'm hoping fingers crossed that an icon will be created and it would look very cool beside our LWC component right so it looks fancy it's not pretty much clear so maybe a darker background would be a, would have been better see you're getting feedback already but you have an icon and this is fancy I really like it right so that is pretty much the idea of SVGs now you might ask Imanshu can we add SVGs in our code like you know in our HTML for people to see yes that can be done you can just you know instead of having it on the SVG file you can have it here it is basically going to serve a similar purpose but this time the logo is going to be shown on your component meaning it is going to render the SVG file if I were to save it and if I go back you will see that the component has rendered the image right so there are two different things the first thing being the icon for icon you have to create the same name file with .svg and you use the SVG here and if you want to use it in your HTML code you would actually use it here like this by creating an SVG tag right and if you notice this comes with its own uh, parameters class is icon this is the version this is the XML value this is going to be the path and the path is going to be this value and then you have a SVG tag being closed right the width and height can be adjusted if you want you can just simply say this is going to be 300 this is going to be 300 save deploy no issues alright so you can use SVGs in this format 
or you can go here and you can use those here in the actual SVG file. Let's refresh this page. The size should reduce a bit. Let's see. Yeah, it has reduced a bit. Looks a bit better, but looks fancy, right? Very easily you are able to, you know, put something in your HTML and you are also able to distinguish your lightning components. All right. Great. There's another way to actually use SVGs. That's basically by, you know, importing st static resources. What you do is basically you save this as a file and then you actually import it as a static resource. But what we'll do is we'll look at it when we are using the import commands, when we are actually working on the JS file, not for now. Okay. But for now, what was important to know is additional files that you can add. And we have talked about it in a good chunk. All right. Great. I have a quick question for you and I want you guys to comment your answer as part of this video. Can you create a lightning web component without an HTML file? Okay. So if bundle showcase or any component for, for instance, does not have an HTML file, if this file is deleted or this file does not exist, is that still a valid LWC component and is it allowed? Let me know the answer. Okay. For what you will have to do is you'll have to actually try it out. So give it a try, delete this and try to deploy it and see whether an LWC component can survive without an HTML file. All right. Great. So that's all I wanted to cover as part of this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.